In this video, we are going to take a look at what is a file system, what is a shell and what are system calls. So a file system is an on disk data structure and a method which is used by the operating system to store and retrieve data. So if there is any application which wants to access the files or the data which is stored on some secondary storage, it sends a request to the operating system and the operating system uses the file system to access the data on that disk. Now this is the logical view. If we take a look at the physical, then if we have a memory, we have some files which are stored on the disk and the operating system which is again loaded into the memory will access the disk to retrieve the data or the, in the form of files. So this file system consists of the files, the file names, directories and the file descriptor. So what is a file descriptor? So I'll just give an example. We will discuss this more in later videos. Suppose I give a call to the operating system, a command like this, open foo. Foo is a file which is available on the disk and I want to open that file. When this request to the operating system is given that we want to open the file foo, this request to the operating system open, it will open the file from the disk and it will return an integer which is known as the file descriptor. So this file descriptor is also part of the file system. Using this file descriptor now, we can reference that particular file. So now this file foo is being represented by this integer or the file descriptor. So using this file descriptor, we can say read, we can perform a read operation, we can give the file descriptor name, we can give the name or the pointer to the buffer in the memory and the size. So here what we are saying is that we are using this pointer fd, this is the file descriptor to that particular file and we are saying we want to read this file descriptor that means this file foo into this buffer the pointer is p and the size maximum size is 500. Similarly we can use this file descriptor to write into the file. So we can write file descriptor from the buffer which is pointed to by p and the size that we want to write the size of the string which can be here we have specified as 500. Now an introduction to the shell. The shell that is provided by the Unix system is interactive. It runs as an application. Earlier it was part of the kernel. So now it runs, if this is the kernel of the operating system, please check my earlier video on what is a kernel. So the kernel is the core component of the operating system which is accessing the hardware. The shell now runs on top of the kernel. Earlier it was part of the kernel. So now this shell runs as an application. Now this OS kernel, it provides an interface to the shell to start a new program. So the shell can interface with the kernel to start a new program or a process. So suppose if this is the prompt of the shell, and if we type browser at the shell prompt, that means now the kernel will interpret this command and it will find the file browser from the storage. Now assuming that the browser is in the given directory because we have not specified the path, that means we are assuming that it is in the given directory, the file browser, it will get loaded. So the browser file will now get loaded over here and the browser will get control. So once the browser has been loaded now, so shell as you can see had sent in a request to the kernel and it wanted to open the file browser. 
Now these service requests from the kernel, they are referred to as system calls. So any application which wants any service from the kernel, it will send a request to the kernel. This request to the kernel to get a particular service from the kernel is referred to as a system call. So the shell wanted to open the file. So it sent a system call over here. Now the file browser has been opened and now the browser will take control and browser can now open new files. It can read write files and all of these open, read write and exit. Again, they will be system calls. So anytime the browser wants to open a new file, again, it will send a system call to the kernel. The kernel will access that file and return it to the browser. Similarly, anytime the browser wants to read or write on a file, it will again send a system call to the kernel. So any application which wants any service from the kernel, it will have to send a system call for the same. Once the browser exits, so if the browser is terminate, terminated now, so when it is terminated, now this exit will return the control back to the shell. So when the browser has finished, the control will now be sent back to the shell. So the shell was the one which had created the browser and on termination, the control is being sent back to the shell. So as we just said that system calls are requests which are made to the operating system. So it is an interface to the services which are made available by the operating system. These system calls, they are available as functions. So for each system call, there will be a function which will be written in C and C++. And certain low level tasks, that means wherever the kernel wants to access the hardware, those particular tasks sometimes may be written using assembly language instructions. Now these system calls can be grouped into six major categories. So there would be systems call, system calls for process control, like creating the process, terminating the process, load, execute, wait and for signaling to a process. There would be system calls for file management, for creation, deletion, opening, closing, read and write of files. There will be system calls for device management. So there can be a request for a particular device. There can be a release of the device once we have finished using that particular device. Then for read and write of the device also, there can be system calls. For information maintenance like get or set the time or the date or get or set the attributes. There will be system calls for communication, for creating or deleting a connection and for sending and receiving messages and system calls for protection where we can get or set file permissions. We will take a look into system calls in more detail in successive videos.